Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review Blade Runner Black Lotus, and this is a new anime from Adult Swim and Crunchyroll through the Toonami section of Adult Swim, and this is an anime series focusing on a story in the Blade Runner universe between the events of the original Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049, as this takes place 17 years before 2049, so do that math, it's 2032. And this story focuses on the Black Lotus, L, who is this being who lost her memory, doesn't quite know where she is and what she's doing, and is stuck in this world and winds up being caught up in a giant conspiracy between the Wallace family who runs the uh, the Tyrell Corporation now, who you get to see part of in Blade Runner 2049. You have the police, you have former and current Blade Runners, and all of this web of mystery and, you know, it really captures that cyberpunk feel of the actual films in a really poignant and interesting way. The animation, though, it's, it's a strange feeling of, like, uncanny valley and also a bit clunky in terms of, like, how it, it expressive some of the animation is. I don't know if this was, like, the wisest choice to make this 3D animation the way that they did because it feels a bit stiff and clunky at times, but... You know, you have 13 episodes here, and I do feel like this is a little overstretched out for the story that it's trying to say, because you do have some episodes that feel like they're spinning their wheels a bit, rehashing some certain things, but it captures that noir feel, that murder mystery, that dark mysteriousness of the original Blade Runner and of Blade Runner 2049, it feels a little more 2049 than it does the original Blade Runner, which I think makes sense because you could tell the story's a little bit more connected to that, especially with the Wallace family. But the intense and really cool and well choreographed action sequences make this so awesome to watch when that action starts flying and you have replicants fighting each other and Blade Runners chasing after them. And then you have the Wallace family, and you have this dynamic between the elder Wallace and the younger Wallace, who really wants to take control of things, and there's that power struggle. You have the Black Lotus, and her trying to figure out who she is and how she came about. And, like, some of that mystery plays out a little bit too on the nose, and you're just kind of like, well, duh. But it still has that atmosphere around it where it does feel like a mystery, even though you might know exactly kind of where this is going to be headed. But you also have these different Blade Runners, and you have, like, this more disgraced and disgruntled, like, drunkard one, and you have, like, the prime top-notch Blade Runner who uh, seems like he's just like a killing machine and all of them interacting with each other. Jessica Henwick does a great job as L, our main character, the Black Lotus. I think she gives a really fine vocal performance. You have Wes Bentley and Brian Cox, who are the Wallaces. Um, Bentley playing the character that Jared Leto winds up playing in the 2049 film. And they have a very interesting dynamic and play off each other well. Will Yoon Lee... I think is one of the real highlights of this series as like this older, disgruntled, uh, you know, he's an older disgruntled Blade Runner, and he has some, there's a whole episode that kind of shows his backstory and why he might not really be in the game anymore, and I think that's one of the more interesting sequences in the film, and I think he adds a lot to this series and his characterization. Then you have Josh Duhamel, who's like the prototypical Blade Runner, and I think he does a great job. He has that like voice that's very powerful and intense. And you have like the police side of things, which I think might not be the most interesting part of the series, but you have like Steven Root, who's like a slimy uh, bad guy in the force, and you have Samira Wiley, who I think does a really great job as this other cop who's kind of along the trail of things and trying to keep up with stuff. And they use the character to try to, like, do exposition dumps and trying to, like, 
summarize the season in the middle. There's one particular episode that felt very, like, okay, I don't have a memory for, like, 13 weeks that I can't just watch this series without you giving me an episode to, like, what has already happened. But, you know, these characters all come together. It's a cool, if not familiar, kind of experience. The mystery might not be as mysterious and interesting as they intended, but I still think this is a cool, engaging, and intense series that I think brings to life the Blade Runner f world and is a fun addition to it. It's not great. It's not something that's on the same level as the two films, but I do think that it's a quality addition to this canon, and I would definitely recommend it. It's a cool anime. But those are my thoughts on Blade Runner Black Lotus. Let me know what you think, and let's talk some TV. But thank you, as always, for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.